Salavat şerbi getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır ola. Ales vacı tahiret evladı Resul-i Sabbidin Efendilerimizi Sayın Enbiya Zemme Resulü Fihan Hazretin Erbaş Şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal Habeşi Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahibü Seyyid Şabdül Kerim El Kıbrıs El Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve alel husus bu caminin bayinisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezzin kaynılarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Eûzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnnallâh ve melâiketem yüsellûn alel nebi ya eyvellezîn amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber, Allahu ekber Allahu ekber, Allahu ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayya aleyhissalam Hayya aleyhissalam Hayya al-falam Hayya al-falam Allah Ekber Allah Ekber La ilahe illallah Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Elhamdülillah ta'ala ve nastaghfiru ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve eşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluh. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zuvacihi ve sahabi tabi khulafı raşin mahdin min ba'di. Huzra ammeti ala tahkik, huzemihi almeti khulafı resulü ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Usman ve Ali ve Allah Bakr sabit tabi'in Ridvan Allah Ta'ala aleyhi mecma'in Ya eyyuha al-Mu'minul hazirun Yitakul Allah Ta'ala ve te'in Allahum al-lazina tekul al-lazina hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil anbiya ve mursalin Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in We are praising Allah with the words of Rasulullah aleyhi sallatu ve selam saying, Ya Allah, all the praises are for you. You are the holder of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. All the praises are for you. You have the possession of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. All the praises are for you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and all the praises are for you. You are the king of the heavens and the earth. All the praises are for you. You are the truth and your promise is the truth. And to meet you is true. Your word is the truth. And paradise is true. And hell is true. And all the prophets, peace be upon them all, are true. And Muhammad is true, alayhi And the day of resurrection is true. Ya Allah, I surrender my will to you. I believe in you and depend on you. And repent to you and with your help. I oppose my opponents and I take you as my judge to judge between us. Please forgive me my previous sins and future sins and whatever I concealed or revealed and you are the one who makes some people forward and some backward. There is none to be worshipped but you. There is no might or power except with you. Ya Allah, bless our master Sayyidina Muhammad whose light was created first and whose appearance is a mercy for all the worlds. As many times as the number of your creation, the past 
and yet to come, and of those that are blessed and of those that are unfortunate. Such a blessing that is beyond counting, unlimited and unbounded. A blessing that is endless, never finishing. A blessing that is permanent with your everlastingness and send blessings on his family and companions, the same blessings on them. Ya ayyuhal mu'minun, no believers. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. Sadaqallah al-Azim. We are coming from Allah and we are going back to Allah. This is the journey of man, O Muslims. What has made us to think that this journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is easy? Because definitely everybody thinks that this journey is going to be easy. Especially the Muslims of today, Muslims of the 21st century. Muslims think that this is the most easy journey. They make more preparations to go on a vacation than to the journey to meet their Lord. Today in the mimbar, so many imams and alims and muftis will go up and say, Brother, Islam is easy. Islam is not meant to be difficult. Why do you worry so much? And they are just saying, just pray five times a day. Fast in Ramadan, give your zakat, go on hajj, be a nice person and you will reach to paradise. And they all know how to read the hadith saying that Islam should be easy. But giving everyone the wrong understanding. What is that hadith saying? Religion is easy and no one overburdens himself in religion except that he will be unable to continue in that way. So do not be extremists, but try to be near perfection and receive the good news that you will be rewarded. Gain strength by worshipping in the mornings and afternoon and during the last hours of the night. And the words of the Prophet speaks the truth. Astaghfirullah. But today's Muslims have made this into an excuse to be weak and to be disobedient and to be lazy. When they read this hadith, they say, you don't need to work hard. Look, Prophet is saying, just take it easy. They have become deaf, dumb and blind. Not just physically, but also in their hearts and in their minds and in their understanding. The great commentator of Sahih al-Buhari, Ibn Hajar al-Asqali, is explaining the hadith saying this means that when a person exhausts himself in performing too many acts of worship, he will eventually be unable to continue and will stop doing them. So this hadith is talking about becoming extreme with ibadat. Like we see so many new Muslims trying to do trying to stay up all night praying, trying to fast every day, and then dropping it the next day. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Islam. He made Islam possible and easy for everyone to carry until judgment day, from every nationality, man, woman, and child, from east to west and north to south. We do not have the shariat of Bani Israel or the other nations. We have a shariat that takes into account the limitations of mankind and it is straightforward and the Rasulullah is there as a mercy to make things more easy for us. He is in front of us and as long as we follow his footsteps, we are in safety. Sahib al Sayyid, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrisiya Rabbani is explaining the nature of this ease, saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it easy for us. He is sending his prophets and he's sending his books saying to us what he has created, how he has created, why he has created the things that he has created and what is the duty which they have to do. So Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is saying, I wish I had never been created. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu is saying the same thing. Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Osman radiallahu anhu, including the Holy Prophet wasalam, the meaning is they are saying that we are not going to be able to carry what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. 
is not because of the heaviness, but because of our ego. The ego is pulling us to the wrong direction every day. In the words of the friends of Allah, they speak the truth. Listen to Sahib al Saif. He is speaking about the ease. Then immediately goes to the statement of the Khulafa Rashidin when they wish they had never been created. Because the duty of being a human, the duty of being Hazrat in Sun, the journey of returning to Allah, that is heavy. So to those who are claiming it is very easy, whose Islam are you following? Whose guidance are you following? Who are your guides and what is your path? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us in the Surah Al-Fatiha that we must take guidance and the path only from those whom He has favored, not from those that have deviated and not from those who have incurred his wrath. So whose footsteps are we walking in? What Allah do you think you are returning to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear what he wants on that day of return. He is saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim the day when neither wealth nor children will benefit anyone except he who will come to Allah with Qalbun Salim, with a pure heart. Sadaqallahul Azim. We must be sincere. We must understand and see if we have that Qalbun Salim, if we have that pure heart. And what are the steps to having that pure heart? to having that sincere heart. We cannot lie to ourselves. We can lie to the whole world. But sit down and look and see what is in your heart. See what is motivating us to be busy every day from the minute that we wake up to the time that we sleep. What are we busy with? Sahib al-Sahib is saying, watch yourself. Look at yourself. Say to yourself, Am I happy with the situation that I'm living in right now? Is it enough for me to get up for the judgment day like this? Ask yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Don't cheat yourself. You may cheat the whole world. Today's people are lying to the whole world. Left and right. At least don't lie to yourself. Look at yourself. Look at your actions and say, do you like it? If you like it and you say that it's according to the line with Islam, then continue, because that's how you are going to die. If you don't like it, then correct yourself. Sultan al-Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim al Haqqani is saying, ask yourself, have you become a real Muslim? Have you submitted to Allah and sacrificed your nafs like Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice to slaughter his son whom he loved more than anything? Ibrahim was Khalilullah, the friend of Allah, and he was ready to sacrifice what was most dear to him, his son Ismail. And also Ismail salam, was ready to sacrifice himself, and he was fully submitted. Janam Fed Olson, may my soul be your ransom, he said. Allah doesn't want us to be slaves to our ego, but to serve him. You can do that for what people are living. They live to satisfy their ego, important people as well as common people. So many ordinary stones. Where are the jewels? Imam Rabbani and Naqshbandi Shaykh Al Azam said, Great is the one who saved himself from the slavery of his ego. So we ask. What are we? Servant to Allah or a slave to shaitan? Are we the descendants and the prayers of Hazrat Ibrahim and Hazrat Ismail? Or have we lost our lineage? Who are we following? This is the question for this time. Who are you following? 
The human by his nature follows something. What are you following? Are you following those who ask you no fee and themselves are rightly guided? Or have you become the one that Allah describes saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Have you seen the one who takes as a God his own vain desires? Allah has, knowing him as such, and left him astray and sealed his hearing and his heart and understanding and put a cover on his sight. Sadaqallah al Deaf, dumb, and blind. May Allah save us from that. But what and who are we following? We claim we are following Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi are we following him? Are we following an idol that we invented when we looked through the lens of our own ego? To follow the Holy Prophet it has to have its proof. For the man came, one man came to the Holy Prophet and said, I love you, Ya Rasulullah. And Holy Prophet said, be careful what you say. And the man said, Wallahi, I love you. Wallahi, I love you. Wallahi, I love you. And Holy Prophet said, If you love me, then prepare for difficulty. The ones who gave their proof of following, they are the Sahabi Kiram, the Ahlil Bayt, and the Tabi'in, and the ones who followed them until this day. Hundreds of thousands, millions even. Those are the ones that we should follow in order to follow the Holy Prophet ﷺ properly. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq gave that proof when he was beaten by the unbelievers and when he woke up and said, How is Rasulullah? Hazrat Umar gave this proof when he went to the Kaaba with his bow and sword and said, Anyone who wants to touch Rasulullah must fight me first. Hazrat Osman gave this proof when he was martyred for carrying the sunnah of Rasulullah Hazrat Ali gave the proof when he slept on the bed of Rasulullah while the assassins drew their swords. Hazrat Salman of Farisi gave this proof when he abandoned his princehood and became a slave in the search of Rasulullah. Hazrat Bilal gave this proof on the hot sands when he cried out, Ahad, Ahmad. Hazrat Hassan gave his proof when he was poisoned for carrying the words of his grandfather. Hazrat Hussein and his family gave the proof in Karbala. The inheritors, the Evliya Allah, gave this proof in their lives. The Ottomans gave their proof in their lives. Our grand sheikhs gave this proof in their lives. Imam Rabbani gave his proof in the dungeons where he would not compromise on the oneness of Allah. Sultan al-Awliya Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim al-Haqqani gave this proof when he called the azan from every minaret in Cyprus until the tyrants gave him a death sentence. Sahib al Saif gave this proof when he sat in the jail cell of the tyrants for saying, I am the soldier of Allah, la ilaha illallah. That proof, it is the proof that their prayer and their sacrifice and their living and their dying, it is only for Allah. That is the proof of being the servants of Allah. That teaching is alive. That teaching, that training, that discipline, it is here. It is still here. That guidance will never leave, inshallah. That training will teach you how to divorce everything except for Allah from your intention. That training will teach you how to get rid of your anger, how to control your anger, how to control your jealousy of your pride and your stubbornness. Getting rid of these diseases. It is not an opinion. It is not an option. It is a farz. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I want the Kalbin Salim. Only the Kalbin Salim. How are you going to make a Kalbin Salim? 
It is not through so much zikr and prayer if your heart is still corrupt and your heart is still dark and dirty. Do we think that if we pray and fast and make hajj and make umrah and give charity but our hearts become the sewers of shaitan that Allah will accept us? Are we that blind to think that the heart is going to be presentable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we think that dead and empty rituals will save us when our hearts are rotten with our disobedience? Allah will not accept that. Listen to this hadith properly. Listen to this hadith that the scholars and the imams and the preachers have hidden today. Listen to the hadith of Hazrat Muaz ibn Jabal. Somebody asked Hazrat Muaz ibn Jabal, tell me a hadith you learned from Rasulullah Hazrat Muaz began crying until it looked like he would never stop crying. And then he began speaking and said, I heard Rasulullah calling. Muaz, I said, yes, O my dear Prophet. And Rasulullah said, I'm going to tell you something that if you stick to it, it's going to benefit you. If you don't stick to it, you will not find any excuse on Judgment Day. O Muaz, before Allah created the heavens and the earth, He created seven angels. And to each of the heavens, He appointed one of these seven angels as its keepers. Now the guardian angels are going up with man's work, with his service, with his ibadat, from morning to evening, and the work has a light, like the light of the sun. When they bring it up to the lowest heaven, they increase and multiply it. And the angel at the gate says to the guardian angels, hit the face of that person with these deeds. I am in charge of backbiting. My Lord has commanded me not to allow the actions of anyone guilty of backbiting to pass beyond me. Then the guardian angels bring up another man's good works and increase and multiply it until they reach the second heaven with it. The angel responsible for the second heaven says, Stand and with this action, strike the face of that person who did it, for in his work he was seeking worldly honor. My Lord has commanded me not to allow his work to pass beyond me. He boasted in men's society of his superiority. I am the angel dealing with boastfulness. The guardian angels go up with another man's work, so bright with light from charity and worship and fasting that the guardian angels, they were astonished. They pass with it to the third heaven, and there the angel in charge says to them, Stand, and with this action strike the face of that person who did it. I'm the angel dealing with arrogance. My Lord has commanded me not to let his work pass beyond me because he has treated people arrogantly in society. The guardian angels ascend with another man's work, shining brightly like a star and ringing from the acts of zikr and worship, from fasting and from the hajj and umrah, and they pass with it to the fourth heaven. Then the angel responsible for the fourth heaven says to them, Stand, and with this action strike the face and the back and the front of that person who did it. I am in charge of pride. My Lord has commanded me not to let this act pass beyond me. Whenever this man performed any action, pride entered into it. The guardian angels go up with another man's work and pass with it to the fifth heaven. It is like a bride being taken to her husband. The angel responsible for the fifth heaven says to the guardian angels, stand and with this action strike the face of that person who did it and make that man responsible for it. I'm the angel dealing with envy. This man used to envy those who learned and those who performed the same deeds as him and everyone who worshipped. This man envied them and slandered them. My Lord has commanded me not to allow his work to pass beyond me. 
the guardian angels go up with another man's work, bright as the moon from worship and made up of salat and zakat, hajj and umrah, and they pass with it to the sixth heaven. The angel responsible for the sixth heaven says to them, stand and with this action strike the face of that person who did it. That one showed no mercy to any of the sick or those ones who are in trouble from Allah servants. Instead, he used to be happy over their misery. I'm the angel of mercy. My Lord ordered me not to let that deed pass from me. The guardian angels go up with a man's work, consisting of worship and fasting, spending of money for good and jihad and piety. It has a sound like the buzzing of bees and a radiance like that of the sun. Along with it were 3,000 angels and they passed with it to the seventh heaven. The angel responsible for the seventh heaven said to them, Stand and with this action strike the face of that person who did it and hit his limbs and lock his heart. I veil from my Lord every work that is not done for the sake of my Lord. I will not accept every work that is not done for the sake of my Lord. This work was done for the sake of something other than Allah Most High. He did it for the sake of honor among the ulama and fame among the intellectuals and fame among the cities. My Lord commanded me not to allow his work to pass beyond me. Every work, every work not done purely for Allah, it is hypocrisy. And Allah does not receive the work of the hypocrite. The guardian angels ascend with another man's work. Actions of salat, fasting, hajj, umrah, good manners, silence, and zikr of Allah. It is accompanied by the angels of the seven heavens until they have passed through all the veils to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they stand before him and bear witness to him of the good work performed only for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You are the guardian angels over the work of my servant, but I am the watcher over his heart. This act was not done for my sake, but for the sake of something else. So my curse is upon him. Then the angels all say, Your curse and our curse be upon him. And the seven heavens and those in them curse him. And then Hazrat Muaz, who narrated this hadith, started crying. And he said, I said, Ya Rasulullah, you are the messenger of Allah and I am Muaz. How shall I have purity of intention and safety? How can I do this? Rasulullah said, Ya Muaz, do what I do. Imitate me. Even if you fall short somewhat in what you do. Ya Muaz, guard your tongue from slandering your brothers who follow the Quran. Take responsibility for your own sins and do not place the blame on them. Do not find pleasure in criticizing them. Don't be vain in your dealings with them. Don't let the deeds of this world stop you from performing the deeds that will help you in Ahirat. Do not act arrogantly and make people stay away from your bad manners. Do not talk secretly with someone in the presence of others. Do not act boastfully in front of people. You will lose the good of this life and the good of Ahirat. Do not tear to pieces people's reputations so that on the day of judgment the dogs of hell will tear you to pieces in hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, By those who draw forth, do you know what these are, Yamwas? 
Hazrat Muaz said, May my mother and father be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. What are they? The Holy Prophet wasalam, said, Those that Allah says by those who draw forth, those are the dogs of hell that draw forth the flesh from the bones. Hazrat Muaz said, Ya Rasulullah, who is able to acquire these good qualities? And who will escape from these dogs? Holy Prophet wasalam, said, Ya Muaz, it is indeed easy for him for whom Allah makes it easy. And Rasulullah speaks the truth. Where is the safety? Imitate me. Holy Prophet is saying, imitate me. Don't imitate the form. Imitate the heart. Who is going to teach you that? Books? Computers? Websites? Facebook? Social media? Who is going to teach you what is a heart and how to imitate it and how to clean it? Do you think that it is going to be learned by reading and describing even the sirah and describing the hadith? Oh believers, just as the Holy Prophet والسلام, he is not dead. His sunnah is not dead. Just as he is not dead, his lifestyle is not dead. His inheritance is with his inheritors. They will teach you how to live. And they have enough mercy in their hearts to make it easy for us, especially in this Ahir Zaman. Sahib al-Sahib is saying, Tariqat teaches us how to live. Tariqat teaches us to understand what is coming from our ego and what is coming from our Lord. Man cannot be worshipping the two at the same time. Either he is worshipping his ego or his Lord. He cannot be worshipping the Lord of the heavens and at the same time do whatever his ego wants. It is not possible. So where are we going to learn that from? In the sohbet, in the associations of the sheikh. That's why Shah Naqshbandi, Shah Bauddin Hazrat Dari is saying, through our association, one may find his way to paradise. Otherwise, it's just a claim that people have. Four and a half billion Christians are claiming that they are right, that they are on the right way. The Jews are claiming that they are in the right way. The Buddhists are claiming that they are in the right way. The idol worshippers, the snake worshippers, the donkey worshippers, the cow worshippers, they are all kinds of unusual ways that man is making. Anything he is seeing, he is thinking, this is my Lord. So the Lord understanding, Allah understanding, is not that easy. It is an obligation for a man to love Allah. It is obligation, farz. It is wajib for a man to love his Prophet. We have to love Allah, but we have to know Allah, to love Allah. Not by word saying, I love Allah. What are you doing about it? First, we have to learn how to love our Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending His Prophet to us to show us who to love. Saying, love that one. He is appearing in front of you. Learn to love that one and that love will bring you to me. His love will bring you to me. What more ease do we want? This is the ease of Islam. The surrender of your heart. Surrendering our heart, which is the throne of Allah, to its owner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to our desires. Surrender your heart to the ones who are beloved to Allah and His Prophet and are deserving of that love. Surrender your heart to those who are well pleased and pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That love, that connection, that shafaat, that will be the rescue on the day of judgment 
when everything else fails. A Bedouin came to the Holy Prophet والسلام, and said, When is the judgment day? Holy Prophet والسلام, said, What have you prepared for it that you are asking when is judgment day? The Bedouin said, I have not made preparations with my prayer or my fasting or charity. I have not. But I love Allah and His Prophet. Rasulullah said, You will be with those whom you love. O oh, believers, this is the good news. Love the ones who will be with Allah and His Prophet. We will be with them, inshallah. Our actions and our deeds are broken. But we must make our love to be strong. Ya Rabbi, turn our hearts away from the love of the wrong ones to the love to the right ones, to the love to your Prophet and to you. You are the turner of hearts and we are your weak servants. Give us that strength, Ya Rabbi, and forgive us for their sake. Amen. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Allah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <